Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado. If you are here because you are interested in learning more about how you can help support your family's nutrition, please check out my family nutrition playlist here at YouTube. And you can also follow me on Instagram where I am known to post lots of recipes. Today I'm actually answering a viewer's question um, that I kind of thought was a challenge to be honest with you. The question was, what are the top five healthy foods that are easy to grow in my garden? I really love this question because I definitely believe that as best as we can, we should be trying to be connected to the food that we eat. So the first thing that I would say is that if you can't grow a garden, try to focus on finding organic fresh fruits and vegetables in your local grocery store or even better during the summer months, the warm growing season of the year, wherever you live, try to shop at your local farmer's market or maybe even get out to visit a farm and see if you can select some fresh, fresh produce right out of the fields. For many of us, even if we have just a very small area to do so, we can grow a few key things at home to help support our health year round. So I'm going to answer this question based on what I do because as much as I love fresh produce, I don't really have a green thumb and I also have a very tiny yard. So I've experimented over the years and I've played around with a lot of different ideas and a lot of different sort of alternatives to kind of your standard garden. The way that I like to grow my fresh fruits and vegetables at home are in containers or in pots. So I'm actually sitting next to one right here. Uh, you don't need to have a giant yard. You don't need to have raised beds. You don't need to have, you know, all kinds of, um, you know, different water features and things to help keep your garden healthy. All you have to do is find some good sized pots. Think about some fruits and vegetables that you want to grow plant them where they're going to get adequate sunshine and also a little bit of shade, and then tend to them with lots of water and perhaps some natural fertilizers that you can either make yourself or that you can get from a good organic-based gardening store. I'll be honest that my gardening skills, a lot of what I've learned have actually come from my organic gardening store. I go in there and I just ask questions. What will grow in this climate? What's easy to take care of? How do I need to take care of it? Um, and what grows best when? So what I have been doing for the past few years when it comes to growing foods that I can eat at home, I really like to focus on herbs. So that's number one. Focusing on herbs, this is something that you can actually do year round. I grow a few herbs and then in the winter time I can move them indoors and put them in a sunny windowsill and they can continue to provide fresh flavors for salads or added to other you know, ingredients like in marinades or even just eaten kind of fresh off the vine um, to help flavor foods. And also there are a lot of different medicinal benefits of culinary herbs. So I'm actually sitting next to a pineapple sage plant right now, but right next to me over here, I have a beautiful basil plant. It's actually really big. And so I've just picked off a little bit of basil you can see here. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely my favorite smell in the whole world and it totally makes me think of summertime. I don't know about you, but there is nothing better than fresh basil, some fresh grown tomatoes, and some gorgeous either goat cheese or fresh mozzarella, or you could even use a non-dairy nut-based cheese and drizzle that with a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette to make a wonderful caprese salad. So herbs are the number one easiest thing that you can grow in your own garden because they grow really nicely in pots. So I'm sitting next to some of them here. In my backyard, where it gets a little bit more sun, I have some other herbs growing like cilantro, rosemary, uh, oregano, and I also have some thyme. And some of these are not growing in pots. They're also just kind of spread throughout some of the other garden beds amongst the flowers and some other non-edible plants just kind of makes pretty ground cover and then I can go out and I can just snip off what I need for a certain recipe. So the first easy thing you can grow in your garden is herbs. Different herbs have different growing, watering, 
and sunlight requirements. So you can do some research on the internet or again, ask the folks at your local garden store. They can be a wealth of information. The second easiest thing to grow in your garden is tomatoes, believe it or not. I know that sounds crazy because I certainly struggled with tomatoes when I first started planting vegetables and fruits at home. Tomatoes grow on a vine and so you can actually plant them in a pot and they can grow upward. You don't need a lot of horizontal space. You can give them all that they need in a vertical growing environment, which makes it really fun and easy. So I plant my tomatoes in a large pot and I give them like a trellis or a couple of sticks to help them get started and they grow upward and they actually grow to be pretty big. And I try to grow a variety of different kinds of tomatoes so that they can be harvested all summer long, but also that I can have a variety of different tomatoes to go with my basil and a bunch of my salads in the summertime. I love to grow cherry tomatoes. They seem to ripen the fastest. The kids love to pick them off the tomato vines and just eat them right in the yard. I also like some of the bigger, more heirloom varieties of tomatoes, um, just because it kind of gives you some different flavors and different um, types of uses for tomatoes. And again, although I don't have much of a green thumb, I've found that just some of the more standard varieties are the easiest to grow. Do be careful because tomatoes seem to have a little bit more of an issue with certain pests. And so if you're trying to grow preservative, pesticide, um, chemical free tomatoes, then you'll want to use a natural pesticide or um, kind of like an herbicide that again, you can get from your garden store. What I do is I just spray them with a spray bottle that's a mixture of water and basically um, bat feces, I think. I know that sounds really weird. Maybe you weren't expecting me to say that. Um, that is provided to me by the organic gardening store. I think there's also some minerals in there. Again, I'll be honest. I'm talking about things that are easy to grow, not things that are highly scientific. But I just spray all of my herbs and my tomatoes with this mixture to keep certain types of pests, including aphids, away. Number two are peppers. So if you don't have a problem with eating nightshades, growing peppers can be really, really easy because they kind of just take care of themselves. They love sunshine and they kind of look sometimes a little bit wilted during the day, but they really sort of thrive in the evening. That's maybe how they get their name, nightshades. They sort of perk up and they don't really require a ton of water. They can grow to be very large and they can have a very early harvest as well. So peppers is my number three top easiest thing that you can grow in your garden. Right now in my backyard where it gets more sun, that's why I'm not recording a video back there because it's too sunny and too there'd be too much glare and also I would be very sweaty because it's very hot today. Um, I have a few different container pots with different types, types of peppers. I have a standard green bell pepper. I also have shishito peppers and then I have two pots with hot peppers. I really love spice and so I love to grow some of the like Thai peppers and jalapeno peppers and some of the hotter peppers that can be used in cooking. Peppers of this nature, because of the um, ingredient, the uh, component of the pepper called capsaicin is really good as far as anti-inflammatory, it can help with headaches, um, it can help speed metabolism and some other things as well. So having your own peppers on hand that you can just add to any dish is a great, is a great idea. All right, so we've covered herbs, tomatoes, and peppers. Now I'm going to talk about some fruits that I love to grow that are very easy. Raspberries. So when I first moved into this house about 10 years ago and we realized that we didn't have a lot of horizontal space to grow a lot of things, I consulted with a friend of mine and I asked her what would grow well along the fence. So we have a fence that is um, kind of just bare and it does get a lot of sun but um, it has a really um, kind of almost sandy kind of dry soil and she suggested planting a couple of raspberry bushes. Now it did take a few years before they produced any fruit but we have found it very easy um, after the first few years. Again they come back every year they sort of just take care of themselves. They are on our irrigation line and so they basically get watered when our grass gets watered and again we don't have that much grass but um, the raspberry bushes kind of border the fence and again, the kids just love to go out there and pick raspberries off the bush. And it reminds me of when I was growing up and my grandma and grandpa had raspberry bushes that almost bordered their entire um, backyard property. 
So it's definitely one of those summertime fruits that brings a lot of memories for me. So raspberries and also other berries are pretty easy to grow. Strawberries you can definitely grow in a pot. Um, in fact, one of my good friends here in Denver and in the neighborhood has shown me that for years she's just been growing her strawberries in pots. Um, they, again, can sometimes overgrow and take over some space. Um, and they're also um, subject to a lot of different garden pests. So growing them in pots enables you to contain them and also to take better care of them. But we're growing raspberries, so um, that's something that I really love. Finally, and this is more of a springtime um, produce item that you would want to start earlier in the year and um, that, you know, will provide a harvest as early, you know, depending on where you are here in Colorado, can be as early as um, early May, just growing some leafy greens. And you can start these easily from seeds. This is one thing that I've let my kids help out with a lot, which is just, again, to take your large container, your pot with some good potting soil, and just to take a paper container of your favorite salad greens, whether it's spinach or kale or chard or um, butter lettuce or red leaf lettuce, or it really doesn't matter. And just to take out those seeds and just sprinkle them across the top of your pot, a little bit of soil, just to kind of, you know, tamp them down, water them well, keep an eye on those. And within just a couple of weeks, you'll have little baby lettuces that harvest easily. You can then thin them out in the pots and you can help them um, so that they have adequate space to grow. I've even noticed that sometimes in the fall, I'll get like a resurgence of these seeds that maybe didn't take off in the cooler months of spring. And when some of the cooler days start to return in September and October, boom, got some more kale, coming back some more lettuces, and it's always a wonderful surprise. So you can grow your leafy greens, um, starting to plant those seeds close to the last frost in containers. And again, anything that's in a container is easy to move indoors if you're going to have a cold snap. So if you've got these things planted in the ground, your, your veggies and your fruits may be at more risk with different weather changes. There were certainly times this past spring, you know, in Colorado, it can snow all the way to, to June, sometimes even July. I know it's crazy. You would never know on a day like today when it's in the 90s. But when we knew that the cold weather was coming, um, I think it was right around Mother's Day, we just pulled all of our pots into the garage and they were fine, they kept going. So we didn't lose um, those plants that we had started uh, tending to already. So these are just a few of my tips of ways that you can bring cheap, easy, totally fun and nutritious, very family friendly herbs, veggies and fruits to your very own family home and garden. Uh, right, right, right out your doorstep. So take these tips, Check out some of my other videos. I've got a couple of um, cooking videos, where one where I make an awesome ice cream with my kids. Um, I've also got a bunch of um, information about ch children and nutrition, and some other videos on that family nutrition playlist here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Remember to like and subscribe or share this if there's somebody else in your life that you think would benefit from these videos. I'm wishing you great health and I'll be back soon with more videos. Take care. Hi there. This summer I've created for you an amazing summer solstice meal plan subscription. It comes in three options, the four week plan, the eight week plan, or the 12 week plan. All of the meals are included, four meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, seven days a week. And each week you get access to this beautiful handout with colorful recipes, a complete grocery list, and all of the nutritional information to help you stay on track with your healthy goals this summer. Spend more time in the sun having fun and less time worrying about what you're going to eat. This is a great way to stay on track with your goals and to learn some new kind of yummy fun new recipes. They'll stick with you for the long haul. Go to my website sarahpeternell.com and click on the resources tab and there you'll find the meal plan subscription. Thanks.